Hi, I'm Cartha Gewert and this is Tempura. Oh, the head tilt, it never gets old, does it? We have made all sorts of different kinds of food art bentos, particularly ones that were inspired by TikTok, and they're fun and they're cute, but I wanted to pay homage to the inventors of the food art bento, the Kaizaki. So today, we are trying the real thing. So expensive, in fact, that I got this and um, Terry's eating some vector with fruit. <laughs> Look how beautiful this is. The restaurant that we ordered from only seats three tables per seating. There are three tables in this restaurant. That's how seriously they take this food art. Now this is the top layer. What is that? It's so cool. So we have grilled A5 Miyazaki Wagyu with ponzu sauce. Now Wagyu beef is one of the most expensive beefs you can buy. These cows are treated really good and they're extremely marbled. Like there is so much fat in Wagyu that it just kind of melts in your mouth. And I'm really excited to try that. Look how juicy and glisteny that is. Like, does that even look like beef to you? That's some rare steak, Janelle. It's in ponzu sauce, daikon soaked in plum, and Japanese spring petite turnip. Now, I wanted to get a drink for this. The sake brand was founded in 1688, and it wasn't available to the public at first. It was only available to lords. I don't even know what lords are. This is like some feudal Japan stuff. See how that goes? Just like a tiny bit. Just, you know, wet my beak. Just wet your beak with a 2019 international sake award winner. Yeah, it's really good. It kind of reminds me of like all the sakes I've tasted, but it's like a little less like thick. This ball right here is house-made sesame tofu with uh, wasabi. Oh my, give it a try. Whoa, sesame and wasabi go really, really good together. This is the softest tofu I've ever had. It like melts in your mouth like butter. Imagine the flavor of wasabi, but not spicy. That's like kind of what this is. And I know that kind of probably sounds weird, but it really works. You know the thing that they shaved to make wasabi? I just ate that thing. Here we have Japanese pompano fish, which I don't know, apparently it's described as the most edible fish in the world because it's like sweet and mild and you can eat the entire thing. Boiled Tomaya Hotaru Ika, which is firefly squids. I don't know what a firefly squid is, but it looks interesting. And sweet miso on top. There's also palate cleansers in here. That's just a straight up squid. Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, that's really weird. That makes me nervous. This is literally like anime food. It's crazy to me how the presentation is as important important as the taste for this kind of bento box and I'm living for it. I've never had Japanese food at this level before. Ooh. Is that the oh. fish? Yeah. I don't know how this fish is keeping up with the most expensive beef in the world. What's this? I'm eating it. Mountain potato blossom. Look at the little star. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'm scared. It's time to eat the squid. I don't know about this. I have to. I can't. I'm doing it. I can't. It's the best squid I've ever tasted in my life. I just don't like how it's the whole thing. If I was raised eating this, then like, what a treat. What is this? This looks like a broom. Piece of fish? Mm-mm. It's like sweet. I think it's the Japanese ginger stuffed with sweet vinegar egg yolk. No, that's this. This is Japanese ginger stuffed with sweet vinegar egg yolk. What a fun thing. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's so fruity and florally and citrusy. And the yolk is so rich. It's just like, it's everything. This like transcends time. Mm. So this tier was the best thing I've ever tasted in my life. And also this is supposed to be an eight course meal. That was really filling. So I can't imagine how it gets better. Let's take it off and move on to the next one. Oh, that's cool. <gasps> Pretty! Simmered arrowroot potato, taro root potato, plum taste Kyoto red carrot, burdock root with fuki aka Japanese spring stem vegetable. So this is a lot of Japanese vegetables. There's white turnip dome with sweet rice, a four day simmered meat. Oh, there's soba noodles in here and shrimp wrapped with seaweed, baked bamboo shoots. There's shrimp inside fried rice cracker. Okay, what? This is like a prawn with soba noodles wrapped in seaweed and like a tempura batter. And it's really good. This thing? I know this is corn. It looks like zucchini. Yeah, I guess I'll eat this corn. The dog's trying to eat his vegetables too. Mm. 
In Asia, corn is like a very big deal. I never really appreciate the way we make corn here, but every time I have it over there or like part of an Asian meal, like I can really appreciate it a lot better. A little snow pea, give me that. Oh no. Pretty good, huh? I know, it's some high quality cuisine. I know, I'd be crying too. I don't know what any of this is, but it's really, like everything is really good. Like this looks like a, a witch's broom. <laughs> Mm. Oh! Everything about this, they really thought about it. Oh, this is eel! Mmm! I've never liked eel before, but that really does it for me. I don't know what this is, but I'm sure this will do it for me too. Mmm! Mm. Oh, it's Peter Pumpkinhead! Mmm! Is that what potatoes are supposed to taste like? It's so good! Okay, I need to know what this thing is, because like, this thing's crazy. Oh! It's a white turnip dome with sweet rice. Well, I'm gonna try this thing. Like, look at this, it's your birthday. This is okra mm. with shrimp stuffed inside and rice cracker on top. Who does that for one bite? Who does this for one bite? I hope they do it again. <laughs> I would go vegetarian for these vegetables. They're that good. Well, some of them are stuffed with meat. Yeah, but here we have box number Oh. Whoops, it's a fresh pair of chopsticks. What bang? Oh, whoa. You gotta get a picture of this, this is insane. So this is lion caught sea bream surrounded by some palate cleansers. Like, how cute is that? This mini soy sauce? There's radish, there's carrots, there's daikon, there's agar agar. I've never had agar agar in a way that wasn't like a meme. You know what I mean? Like like making like agar agar like jellos or jellies or whatever. I've never had it like, I've never seriously had this. But I'm gonna have the fish first. This is very tender. I'm gonna like lightly dip it so I can actually taste it. Mm. Usually I only get salmon sashimi because I find that the other ones are like, it's like a weird texture, it's like tough or it's too fishy. This is this has like everything I like about sashimi. It's just very pleasant. And the soy sauce actually, it's a very mild, light, like sweet, nutty soy sauce that complements the fish really well. Okay, now I'm gonna try one of these. A vinegar daikon wrapped in radish. Oh. It's like a very mild, light, pickled vegetable. It goes so good with fish. Time for the agar agar. Little dots in it. The agar agar like tastes like the entire experience like wrapped into one. It's like, it's like just like an umami bomb. I thought it was gonna be like a little bit sweeter, like the, the radish and stuff, but it's not. Does she eat the bird? It's carved out of a vegetable. Oh, it's a daikon radish crane. The best crane I ever tasted. All of these are like the best version of the vegetable or the meat you've ever had. Mm. The way that these are folded together, it's just very cute. Mm. So now we are moving on to my favorite part of the day. Dessert. Ah. So this is just fruit, right? Like this is just melon. Shizuoka, I don't know how to pronounce that, but Shizuoka musk melon. Now these melons, they happen to go for like up to $22,000 a melon. I don't think this is a $22,000 melon personally, but I think that this thing sold for like $300. If you look at like the netting on the outside here, this melon in order to be grown, it, it was a full-time job and it took like a hundred days to grow this melon. I looked into it, just like really expensive fruit. It's like very interesting to me. Ahim Kampai tangerines though. I don't know a lot about that. Looks to me like it's just a Japanese orange. <laughs> I've had a lot of like mochi from like the Asian grocer and stuff, but I've never had like a real authentic, we're not playing, this is how we do mochi. I've never had like the intense stuff, like the, oh yeah, oh, I'm here, ready, mochi. Oh, like I've never had that. First off, we're gonna try the melon. So the Japanese, they really like to give each other like really nice fruit as gifts. And I think that's the cutest thing. Like there's no garbage with it. You're just like giving somebody like a really well-nurtured fruit. I've eaten a lot of melons in my life. I took the first bite, juice went all over my pants. Okay, I see what you did there. I was like, oh, okay, she's a juicer. So I tried to take a second bite to compensate for the amount of juice that fell on my pants and more juice fell on my pants. My pants are covered in melon juice. I usually hate melon, but if there was to be a perfect melon, this would be it. It has the melon taste, but it's also quite sweet, but not too sweet. It's it's like taking a drink and taking a bite at the same time. You just make a big mess. I 
gets everywhere. Look how pretty that is. They wrap these up, they like water these, they polish these, like they have like special polishing gloves. It's a whole ordeal to get these melons going. That's what she said. You want some melon? Eat, Eat some, some melon. melon. Fine. This is a really expensive melon. <laughs> I mean, that's one way to not get the juice everywhere. When you take a bite, you go <laughs> tangerine. Tangerine dream. This tangerine appears to have like, it has like little bubbles inside it. Like I know that regular tangerines have that, but like you can really see the bubbles in this. It's like there's like more chambers to keep the juice. <laughs> if all tangerines tasted like this. I'm starting to feel like I don't like fruit because I'm eating our garbage fruit. Yeah. Like our North American garbage fruit. Like we don't even have mango steam. Like screw this expensive stuff. I just want like the normal fruit that they have in Asia. Just the normal fruit. This is the best tangerine I've ever had in my entire life. It's like the perfect, subtle, beautiful tangerine flavor. Not even a hint of tartness. It's so perfect that it almost tastes like a tangerine perfume would smell. It tastes like the essence of a tangerine. I just burped and it was the most pleasant, citrusy, florally burp I've ever had in my life. People who eat like this, their breath is probably good in the morning. Like maybe this is why everyone there lives so long. I don't know. Anyways, let's try this mochi. What could possibly be groundbreaking about this? I mean, the leaf's a, a cool touch, but how good could it be? The leaf is salty. Ooh. I don't know about that. Putting my mouth around the leaf. At first was very strange because I was like, why uh, is this supposed to be a dessert? Uh, is this, uh, uh, why is it salty? I come from a world where we eat chocolate lava cake. It's just sweet, that's it. It's a little shocking at first, the salt, but then when you bite into it, the inside is so sweet that it becomes the perfect mix of sweet and salty. You know, like, you know how a batch of chocolate chip cookies is only really, really good if you put just enough salt in there or like dark chocolate with like some little sea salt flakes in there. This kind of has like that, but I've never had anything like this. I've had a lot of mochi in my life. I've never had anything like this. Oh, I feel so bad for me. Why? Because you've never had it before. Because I've never had it before. My stupid butt thought that red bean paste was supposed to taste like the way I was tasting it at the store. No, this is what red bean paste tastes like. You want to bite? The thing that elevates this, I feel, is the fragrance. It's so strong. Like, it's still in my mouth right now. And a lot of that probably has to do with the cherry blossom leaf. Like, it's like an explosion of like red bean and flowers in my mouth. Like this actually tastes like spring. This tastes like making out with senpai under the cherry blossom tree. It actually does. Let me get it without the leaf because the leaf's quite strong. Okay. The rice actually isn't that flavorful. It's supposed to be a carrier and it's supposed to have like that glutinous feel so it has like a dessert feel to it. The real money is the leaf and the red bean paste. They're kind of like tea, but like with a little bit of salt on top. Mm -hmm. Why is the red bean so good? The red bean paste that you get at the store, like inside the mochi, it's like, it's ground to like a very fine paste. This, like you can still see the skins of the bean in it. There's some sweet treat. Yeah, and then we have like a little thank you dessert that isn't part of the bento, but I want to see what's in here and how it tastes. Like if they can do just like the simplest things that good. Girl, I'm getting impatient, thank you. Hmm. What is this, a little matcha bean? That looks kind of cool, hey? It's a lot smoother than it had to be. There's a lot of matcha in that. And it's like, it's real matcha. It's not like that matcha flavor that you get at a lot of like coffee shops. Real matcha has a very strong flavor. And whenever people say like, like matcha with no sweetener, it always makes me nervous because I don't think that they know what matcha actually tastes like. But yeah, that's very matcha-y. If you had green tea ice cream, it's kind of like that. What about this? They're both really good. I prefer the fruit and the mochi, but they're really good. The popular food art TikTok bentos are cool in that they take regular foods and they make them more fun to eat in an artistic way. It's kind of the same because it's a lot of like very regular ingredients. It's just like taro, it's just radishes, it's just beef, but all of it is done to a higher degree and all of the craftsmanship in every single piece in the, in the presentation. It just makes eating more fun. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth the higher price point. What I'm trying to say here is that I think it's really fun when people try to make art out of food. What I just ate there was an experience. Like it felt really authentic. Like I really felt like someone was sharing their culture with me, similar to how I feel when I go to Singapore and eat. You know what I mean? Like it, it was special. 
And I'm really glad that I got to try it and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me enjoy it. I feel like it was probably hard to watch, hey? I hope this encourages you to support your local cultural hotspots. These guys at this restaurant are doing food at a really, really high level and for the past year, like they've all, they were only seating three people per night and now nobody's been there for a year. I hope they're doing okay. It was nice to be able to support them and what they do, like keeping their culture alive and keeping like the fine art eating alive. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see me again, make sure you hit push notifications and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.